Do you struggle with mom butt? Do you have flat, weak glutes? These exercises are designed to properly engage and train your glutes to strengthen, tone, and shape your butt. It's just 10 minutes and all you'll need are two sliders or small towels and a small step or bench is optional. This is workout number one of a three-part workout series. So make sure you do this one for one to three weeks before moving on to the next one. And for best results, don't train glutes on consecutive days. Let's get started. Hey mamas, welcome to workout number one from my mom butt series. This is our first workout in the series of three workouts. So if you're a beginner, this one's for you. If you're a regular, you can stick with this one too. We're gonna do weights, sliders, and a little step. So for weights, you need something challenging, but if you're a beginner, start light, work your way up. Sliders, if you don't have them, use towels on a wood or tile floor. A little bench, you can use the stairs or go without the bench. So let's get started with that little bench or that step with an elevated glute bridge. So the heels are gonna go on the bench. We're gonna lay back, hips close to that bench, heels planted, hands down. We're gonna drive the hips up, squeeze the glutes at the top, and then lower all the way down gently. So you want about a 90 degree angle, and then you're driving up, pushing those heels into that bench, and then thrusting the hips up. Now you can see at the top, I'm not pushing up as high as I can go, right? I wanna manage that tension, keep it in the glutes and hamstrings. And that little elevation, I've got a 12 inch bench here or step. You can even do a shorter bench if you've got that. The elevation's gonna challenge those glutes and those hamstrings, especially when we lift the toes and really drive out of those heels. Again, your glutes are engaged at the top. You're not overextending. We don't want it to go into that lower back. So enough to feel a challenge. Release here. We're gonna do that same movement, but this time we're gonna add a little pulse to it. So staying up in the bridge, right here, drawing that belly button into forward spine, pelvic floor is connected. We're gonna pulse up and down, up and down. Now, there's a lot of ranges of motion here. You can see I'm dropping a little bit lower here. If you want to, you can take it up a little bit higher. But again, we don't wanna pooch the belly. We don't wanna arch that low back. We wanna keep everything really controlled. Making that pulse really small. That short range of motion is really what's gonna challenge those glutes and hamstrings. Whew, this one burns. And again, if this is way too intense, you do not have to use this step. You can just keep your heels on the floor, feet on the floor, and that is fine too. All right, we're gonna move to a single leg bridge. So keeping it elevated, if you'd like an extra challenge, but if not, put that foot on the floor. Other leg is at 90 degrees, we're gonna drive it up, and then slow lower back down. So that bigger range of motion we get with the bridge is really gonna challenge that hamstring connection. Do you feel that as you come up? Squeeze that glute as you lower down. Control, 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 control. That tension stays in that hamstring. And we have to progressively overload the glutes, right? So these workouts are gonna be more challenging, but we really wanna overload that muscle because it's the biggest muscle in our core. We gotta challenge it to get it strong and to build that nice round butt that we're all looking for, right? And a lot of that is strength, but it's also training smart and not training too often. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we don't wanna train glutes consecutive days. We need plenty of time to rest and recover. So give yourself at least a day, preferably two or three days between training your glutes, other side. In addition, I recommend my postpartum stretch workouts and my postpartum posture workouts because a lot of times throughout our day, our posture affects our glutes, so, or vice versa. Weak glutes, we're gonna tuck them under, we're gonna clench, and we're gonna keep them engaged when we don't need to engage them, and then we're overusing them, creating that flat butt. So, I could go on and on, but these workouts will take care of this, but just make sure you give yourself plenty of time in between training glutes because if you train too often, that's also gonna be a detriment or a hindrance to building glute strength and definition. 
right, moving on now, we're going to go to a bridge slider extension. So carefully come to your sliders. We're gonna take the hips up into a glute bridge, lift, and we're gonna take the front leg out and in, just one leg at a time. Out and in. So I'm staying up in that bridge. Put your hands on your hip bones. You wanna to try to keep those hips level. If you notice yourself dropping when you extend that leg, course correct. Don't go out as far. See, you can go out just a few inches and keep that challenge going. But if you can, take it all the way out and really push through your heel on the slider. Now, if you don't have sliders like this, a towel works well, like a little washcloth. Use it on the wood floor and that will be just fine. You can also drag your foot out and in. If you've got carpet, you can just do it on the carpet with a sock on. That works fine. Lots of options here. And again, the goal is to create that strong stability as we're moving the leg, really gonna challenge that green hamstring. Okay, keep those hips up if you can. If you need to, you can drop them down. We're gonna do the same thing, other leg. Whoo! All right, out and in. Digging through that heel. You're gonna feel a little more fatigued now because we just worked that front leg. So as you switch to the other, you're gonna be fighting for that bridge. And again, keep that core engaged. If you're doing these workouts, I'm gonna assume you know how to engage your core because they are a little more advanced. If you do not know how to do that, check out my shorts video on how to properly engage your core and my postpartum ab program or my Lose Your Mommy Pooch Plan. Those are gonna help you build a strong core foundation so you can manage that pressure through some more intense workouts like this one. And you may think this is not intense. Your heart rate's not probably gonna be super high, but it's intense in terms of the load we're putting on that muscle. It's challenging. Oh, rest. Burn so good. Okay, carefully come up to standing and grab your waist. We're gonna take our front foot forward, our back foot back, about a foot, for a kickstand deadlift. So chest up, shoulders back. We're gonna hinge forward from the hips, coming to a flat back, and then stand all the way up. I want you to think about shaving your legs with the weight. That's how close they are. Then as you stand up, push through that front heel, squeeze your butt. Stand up tall, hips under shoulders. Push through that front heel and you're putting most of the weight in your front leg. Even though we're keeping those back toes on the ground, we wanna hinge forward like we're looking over a cliff. So we get that pressure in the front hamstring, front glute. Because in following workouts, we're gonna take that back leg off the floor. So we're working our way up to that single leg deadlift. Now this should be challenging. We wanna maintain good posture and feel like it's challenging, but if you start to compromise form, drop the weights, go lighter. Okay, staying on that same leg, we're gonna lift the back leg for an airplane, arms go out wide, lifting the back leg up, trying to get that back parallel to the floor. Let's bring it back up, you can step back or you can step all the way in, whatever's more comfortable. The goal here is to keep hips, shoulders square to the floor, move slow and controlled, toes point down. And then we're coming to a flat back position. This is kind of like a warrior three if you've ever done yoga. You can take your arms out front if that's more comfortable as well. You can see there's a bend in my front knee. It's soft, it's not locked out. Again, I'm hinging from my hips. So it's that same movement as like a single leg deadlift. We're working our way up to it. And if this is too challenging for your balance, Feel free to put your hands on a wall. Do whatever you want with your arms. You can even take them to heart center or on your hips. But again, I don't want you shifting your weight or opening the hips. I want you to stay square to the floor here. Okay, we're gonna do all of that other side with the weights for that kickstand deadlift. So one forward, one back about a foot, foot and a half in between. Hinge from the hip, shave your legs with that weight. Stand up, squeeze the glute. Now, again, we want that front leg always a little bit soft here. We don't want to overextend into the low back like so. We want to keep those knees soft at the top so we're keeping that pressure in the glute. Always keeping a little squeeze between shoulder blades. We never want to round the spine to hinge. It's a hinge from the hip, not from the spine. And I love to work out barefoot. I should have said this at the beginning, but you can do this with shoes on if you're more comfortable. But I love to do a barefoot because I can really feel all four corners of my foot pushing into the mat. So preferably do it without shoes on. And that really is gonna help when we get to those more balanced, challenging exercises like the airplane, like we just did. It's gonna help you connect to that muscle. 
Good. And part of strengthening the glutes, a big part of it is that mind muscle connection. We're working on it here. Okay. Assume that same posture. Again, arms can do whatever you want. We're going to go into that airplane. So hinge from the hip, tipping forward, front knee soft, keep those toes pointed to the ground. Again, you do not see me opening up toward the camera. I'm keeping everything square as best as I can. It's not perfect. I'm not the most flexible, so you'll never see my legs locked out in pretty much anything because I can't. But again, if you are flexible, you're hypermobile, make sure not to lock your leg out. And if you can't get your back totally parallel to the floor, don't sweat it. Just work your way up to it. We're just trying to get that balance, that mind muscle connection in preparation for adding weights to this movement in the following workouts. All right. That's it, 10 minutes, your first workout. So again, make sure you do this one a few times to where you feel like you can handle the load with control before moving on to the next workout. Again, don't train consecutive days, give it a few days in between, no more than three times a week training glutes for best results. Your body needs time to recover to rebuild that muscle after we break it down with a tough workout. So again, let me know what you think in the comments if this was challenging, if you have questions. Otherwise, I'll see you back here for workout number two.